السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his household, his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all. May Allah bless you all and your offspring. May Allah bless us as an ummah. And may Allah bless humanity at large and guide us all to the straight path. Make it easy for us to tread upon this beautiful path and make it easy for our offspring, those who are to come up to the end of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for one and all. Amin. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Every time we speak about the purpose that Allah created us, every time we speak about why did my maker make me, what was the reason? So many people answer in different ways. Some people say, he made you so that you can come on earth and enjoy, so that when you die, you will enjoy even more. Well, those are not really believers because enjoyment correct but not beyond limits i cannot enjoy harming you i cannot enjoy stealing from you i cannot enjoy swearing you i cannot enjoy hurting you that is something very interesting if i do that surely you have the right to justice you have the right to justice. And if you do not get justice in this world, I promise you, the Almighty will give you that justice at some stage. And He will give it to you in the hereafter, if it be extended to that point. My brothers and sisters, let's realize we as Muslimin say that we were created in order to be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. It is He. This is in Surah Al-Mulk, verse number two. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "It is He who created death and life in order to test you." What is the test? I want to know the question. If I want to test you, you'll say, okay, test me. What is the question? So I will ask you a question and you reply the question. And then I will tick it to say you are right or you are wrong and you get your results. So Allah says, I created death and life in order to test you. Oh Allah, what do you want to test us about? What is the question? <laughs> Who from amongst you has the best deeds? All of us seated in this masjid today, men and women, who from amongst us has the best deeds? That's why we were made. Now, it might sound absurd to some who don't understand, who don't believe, who have never thought about it. But when you think about it, my brothers and sisters, people like you, more handsome than you and I, prettier than you and I, should I say, wealthier than you and I, what happened to them? They came, they lived for a few years, they died, they were motionless, they were buried, we buried them, and they continued. Where did they go? What was their purpose on earth? Some of them committed sin upon sin and did not repent. Some of them committed sin upon sin and changed their lives. Some of them did not commit sin from the beginning. Or when I say did not commit sin, I'm talking of major sin. Minus sin, there is none from amongst us who can be protected from it. Kullu bani Adam khatta. The hadith says every human being makes mistakes or sins. Wa khayrul tawwabun. And the best of those who constantly make sins are those who constantly repent. You see, the Prophet ﷺ did not say kullu bani Adam khati. He did not say that. Khati'una. He did not use that word. He used the word khatta. In the Arabic language, the linguistics of that terminology is such that it refers to someone habitually doing something. 
One is khati'un, a person who made a mistake. And one is khatta'un, a person who makes a lot of mistakes. Not one, many. Then the hadith says, so what happens to the person who makes many mistakes? Well, khairul khatta'in, the best from amongst those who makes many mistakes, are those who repent. So no matter what you've done, no matter how many mistakes you made, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah, for indeed Allah will forgive all of your sins. Continue to seek the forgiveness of Allah. أستغفر الله وأتوب إليه. When we sit in salah, one of the sunnah duas to make اللهم إني سي ظلمت نفسي ظلما كثيرا ولا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت فاغفر لي مغفرة من عندك وارحمني إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم Oh Allah, I have wronged myself a great wronging I have wronged myself in a big way and there is none to forgive sins besides you so forgive me a forgiveness from you and have mercy on me. For indeed, none can forgive sins besides you. Allahu Akbar. So we were created in order to be tested. The test is who has better deeds. Do you know what that means, my brothers, my sisters? It means that every single moment in your life, you are being watched. What are you doing? Every moment you are being watched. What are you doing? The right answer will be in front of you. The wrong answer will be in front of you. What did you choose from the two? Sometimes there is a multiple choice of 10 answers. You know which is the best answer. You know which is another acceptable answer. And you know which is a wrong answer. And you know which is an evil answer. It's up to you to choose. Every minute, including today. Every minute, including today. We are being watched. Allah is putting in front of us things. The more things He puts, the more chances you have to answer correctly. So your test, you can prove I have better deeds. What did I tell you? I said in this masjid, my brothers, my sisters, who from amongst us has the best of deeds? He's the winner, right? I don't know. I can only try. You don't know. You can only try. And the beauty is Allah says, when you seek forgiveness, we wipe out the wrong answers. Imagine there is dangling. I'm going to give you an example. A bottle of alcohol is dangling. You are stressed and depressed. You look at this pub in front of you and you see people drinking cold beers and you think to yourself, hey, I'm stressed. Let me just have a little bit. You understand the test? It's a test. You see a cold beer and the guys are drinking and laughing. You are depressed. You've got a problem back at home, a problem with your children, a problem with your cash, a problem at the job, a problem with your parents, a problem with the council and a problem with the police. And you're thinking to yourself, ah, this one little glass not going to do too much of damage it can only do good think allah is telling you we put it in front of you to test you what what are you going to do you answer the question correctly you say oh allah you told me not to go there i won't go there i'm going to walk straight and i'm going to carry on allah will help you Sometimes Allah might put another problem because now you have a cash problem and there's a $20 sticking out from uncle's pocket at the back. Now what happens? You say, I just need 19. Wow, oh Allah, thank you for blessing me with 20. That's not a blessing. That is a robbery, subhanAllah. It's a test. If you can stay away from that 20, you might struggle a little bit. But I, trust me, when you get to the Akhirah, you are going to go to Jannah because you had better deeds. That was your test. You become sick. And people tell you, you know, I went to that Nyanga. You know what? Ah, he just jumped a little bit three, four times. He got five, six bones and he started calling on the spirits. I walked out of there with no back problem. You look at him and you think, hey, but my back is aching. 
It's Allah made your back ache to test you. You know the answer. Should you go there? Should you not go there? You know the answer. But because you do want to fail the test, you end up going. Your back is right, but you fail the test. You got the $20, but you fail the test. You drank the beer, but you fail the test. You felt okay for a while. After that, more problems come. And guess what? You get depressed. You get stressed. You get suicidal because you don't have belief. But a believer, bigger problems will come. He gets happier and happier, more content, closer to Allah. My brothers, my sisters, when your problem drives you to the pub and it drives you to drugs and drives you to gambling and drives you to adultery you need to know there is something wrong with your iman when your problem brings you to the masjid you are a mu'min when your problem makes you soft and makes you ask Allah for forgiveness you are a mu'min because Allah said when he loves you he puts a problem in your life why people say that does not make sense it makes sense you did not think about it when you have a problem, how many of us became good Muslims because we had problems? A guy walking around with his jeans halfway down his backsides and he's moving with his hairstyle this way, that way. Suddenly he's diagnosed cancer. Next thing, his beard starts protruding. After a while, he's wearing a bit of better clothing. Then you see him in the first surf. What happened? He was diagnosed. That's the reason. What turned him? His test turned him. That's what happened. But when you have a test, whether it is financial and all the other things I mentioned earlier on, if that drives you towards haram, you are failing upon failure. That's what's happening. So if someone says, why are you alive here? I'm alive to save myself from what Allah told me to save myself from. That's why I was created until death. Because those who committed the adultery, when they were on their deathbeds, if they could talk to you, they would tell you, son, I did it, don't do it. Say, hey, uncle, you enjoyed your days, now leave me alone. May Allah forgive us. That's the attitude. We are young, we are energetic. We want to go and commit the sin. That's what we want. But think of it, one day you're going to be old. You won't be able to walk. You won't be able to talk properly. You will need help to walk. And you're going to think when I was 20, when I was 25, 30, 40, I used to commit sin upon sin. I, I didn't know who Allah was. Now I'm at an age where, wallahi, wallahi, I'm telling you guys, I'm at an age where I'm thinking to myself, I should have used my energies properly. Life was so short. What did I gain from that? Nothing. Zero. I gained nothing. Wallahi, the nur that a person gains on their faces when they have saved themselves from a sin for the sake of Allah is something you will feel in your own heart to begin with. It's a nur. You feel close to Allah. You want to read the Quran. Wallahi, all of us seated here, without exception, myself included, we can do more regarding our connection with the Quran. Because we don't read enough Quran. Am I right? There, the heads are nodding. MashaAllah. We need to read more. Come five minutes early. Pick up one mushaf. Read one line, one verse. Put it back. Subhanallah. Do it with your heart. What will happen? Your life will change. That's what will happen. Your life will change. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He hated Islam. He hated Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa How many verses did he read that changed him? Totally. His life was totally transformed. Do we even read the verses trying to understand the meaning? An Najashi, the Negus of Abyssinia. He heard a few verses. He started crying. We are Muslims. We heard the whole Quran so many times. Have we cried? Question, have we cried? Allah talks about an najashi And Allah talks about the Christian priests who heard the verses of the Quran, Surah Maryam being recited. And Allah says, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ 
ترى أعينهم تفيض من الدمع مما عرفوا من الحق when they hear what was revealed to the messenger you see their eyes filled with tears because of their recognition of the truth that's why my brothers and sisters do not think that the difficulties in your life are a punishment from Allah if they are drawing you closer to Allah they are not a punishment if they are drawing you away from Allah then they are a punishment when you have a problem and the first thing you say is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un you are a believer when you have a problem what are you taught to say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un what does it mean massive accident someone died something bad happened a loss a robber came and attacked and stole something first words we belong to allah we are all going to return to allah anyway Subhanallah, that's what it means. We belong to Allah. When something bad happens, you remind yourself, I belong to Allah. It's okay. It's okay. So people might say, why is all the suffering? Wallahi, everywhere on the globe, people are struggling. People are suffering. If they're not struggling and suffering, they are working very hard in order to survive. Life is becoming tough no matter where you go. Go to America, it's becoming tough. Choose a country, life is becoming tough. No matter where, it's not here. Every place has a different challenge. We are blessed here in Zimbabwe. Our challenges are of an economic nature perhaps. Anything else? Anything else? If I had to give everyone a million bucks in this room, what would happen? We are living in the best place on earth. Unfortunately, I don't have those millions to give you. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Inshallah, it will come. That was quite a loud inshallah. Mashallah, that's good. But the point I'm raising is very pertinent. It's important to say, look, we have a problem of an economic nature. We have fresh air. We have mangoes and lemons and apples in our gardens. People won't believe you. We have anything you need. Tomatoes, lettuce, cucumbers. What else? Yes, cauliflower. What else? Someone said bottles. Alhamdulillah, we have everything you can think of. You go to some countries, they can't even dream of that. Another thing is we have the space. You know, the density of the population, subhanallah. We have enough land, people's houses are okay. Go to some first world countries, people cannot live in more than a small room. And it's a very advanced country. Space is so expensive. You own a property and I still don't know how it works you own a property what is it it's a flat on the 30th floor so how many people are owning this in this property flats they'll tell you there are a thousand flats here a thousand people own it but the space of it it goes upwards it doesn't go horizontally it goes vertically so if something happens to that building what happened to your flat? Allahu Akbar, I don't want to think. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I don't want to think because it disappears. That's what happens. It's gone. Subhanallah. What a gift we have. Your house broke down. You still have your land, don't you? Build another one. Yeah, you can put up a tent there. But I can imagine the thousand people, which tent are they going to put up? May Allah have mercy on humanity. So all I'm trying to raise here is the gift that each place has and the challenges that each place has. People say, I need to go. Well, it's not wrong or haram to go somewhere, but ask yourself, why are you going? What do you have here? What don't you have here? And you answer a lot of questions before making a decision. That's something important because I know of people who've left, they are crying, they want to come back. 
I know of people who've left and they've done well. So it all depends if Allah has blessed you with something. I gave an example to a brother of mine recently, a brother in Islam, obviously, and a friend. I told him, I said, my brother, you want to shift out. How's your business? He says, ah, it's okay, not as good as it used to be. I said, that is such a perfect answer. Everyone is going to tell you it's not as good as it used to be in the whole world. In the whole world, they're going to tell you that. If you give a beggar 50 cents and he tells you, thank you very much. I'm going to buy two avocados and I'm going to eat this evening with my whole family. May God bless you. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be happy, isn't it? How much did you give him? 50 cents. You might take out an extra bond note. Sorry, no dollars. But you might take out an extra bond note and give it to him and say, have this as well. Because you were happy with what he said. But if you give a beggar 50 cents and he tells you, ah, hey, too little. And, and he walks to another car to beg. What are you going to do? You're never going to give him anything again. Right? Ungrateful. Allah's giving us our 50 cents here. Buy our two avocados and feed the family. And thank Allah. He's going to give you more. Allah says, if you are grateful, if you show gratitude, I will give you more. And if you don't show gratitude, you are ungrateful. My punishment is severe. See? See the parallel here? Show gratitude. Thank Allah. How do you thank Allah? Do good deeds. Help others. You got 50 cents? Buy your two avocados. Send a small piece of avocado to your neighbor. I'm giving you an example. I'm giving you a very low example. But it's practical. You know what I mean. It fits in each person's life in their own context. Reach out to others. Make someone's life easy. Allah makes your life easy. Think about yourself alone. That's it. You will be alone. You die alone. Subhanallah. This is Allah, Allah's plan. You want the help of Allah? Muhammad says, Well, You want Allah's help? Allah will help those. Allah continues to help those who are helping others. Subhanallah. Many of us, we think, Ah, I'm a poor man. How can I help others? Help others with a smile, with good attitude, with a good greeting. Imagine a person is depressed. His wife is giving him hassles or her husband giving her hassles. Okay, let's stick to a man, okay? So the wife is giving hassles, the children giving hassles, the parents, the in-laws, everywhere, problem, financial problem. The house, they cut off the electricity, they cut the water off, he couldn't pay. He walked out, there's a case against him, there's this happening, there's that happening. And suddenly he meets a brother, Salaamu Alaikum, oh, so nice to see you, my brother. I'm so happy to see you. And he's like, hey, I think this guy's got the wrong chap here. <laughs> right? But you say, MashaAllah, Salaamu Alaikum, and you're smiling, my brother, embrace the man, tell him, Alhamdulillah, so good to see you, what a lovely day. You know what happens? He feels like he's part of a big family known as the Ummah. His burden is less. Allah will make your burden less as well. What did it cost you? Not even a piece of avocado. Not even that piece, you could eat it yourself. It costed you nothing. You just needed good attitude you need to smile at the people and this is why you see someone greet them smile at them wallahi today we have attitude what's the attitude no one greets there's no greeting not at all i think in this masjid it's a bit different isn't it greet each other salam alaikum how are you my brother you don't have to ask hey can you give us two dollars from there you know because then people might not greet you we don't need that but just salam alaikum, how are you my brother? Is everything okay? I hope you're happy. So good to see you. MashaAllah, etc, etc. You don't need to add words that are hurtful or words that put pressure on someone. Hey, you got a lack of right? So where did you hack the box from? No, you don't need to say that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Don't worry. Did he pinch your money? The answer is no. Leave him alone. Subhanallah, he must have somehow, something. You know, people say, hey, you're looking well. You're looking well, mashallah. That's good. That's good, mashallah. You can tell people you're looking well, mashallah. It's good to see you. Let's increase these words. You know why? Your deeds become better. You are happy for the happiness of others. When you see someone sad, don't ignore him. Go up, greet him. 
Assalamu alaikum, my brother. How are you? Nice to see you, my brother. Sometimes you might not know the person. What's your name, my brother? Hey, good to see you. I see you every week here. It's good to get to know one another. That's it. Why? We are part of an ummah. Learn to love. Why do we find small matters to differ? And to create disunity amongst us. Find thousands of things to bring us together. When I was young, we were taught. And you know, subhanallah, there are signs. Sometimes there are signs. You can see that this person here definitely is coming to the masjid. Sometimes there's no sign. I don't know. I have to greet. Salaamu Alaikum. We were taught, anyone who greets you, even if he appears to be a non-Muslim, for you, you need to treat him as a Muslim. Because he's offered you the greeting. Salaamu Alaikum. Say, ah, this guy is just lying. He just wants to say it because he learned it, you know. Especially when they don't say it properly. The tajweed is not right. They say, Salaamu Alaikum. Have you heard that? <laughs> So what? He's a Muslim. Re reply. Smile. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. How are you? So good to see you, my brother. Etc. Wallahi, even if he's not a Muslim, what is he going to think? He's going to say, hey, these guys, they've got this bond. They are connected to each other. They are serious. Let me be a part of this. Subhanallah, brotherhood. Don't discount people, no matter who they are. A person walking, a person who, is, who has a lovely vehicle, a person who doesn't, all of them are your brothers and they are your sisters in Islam. When you greet, greet genuinely. Make sure you reach out to people with your expressions. Please, my brothers and sisters, have a good expression. Make people feel that they are part of the family because they are. Today, we have so many things that depress us. I told you the economic challenges we are going through. Even if you sit for half an hour with a person not from this country to explain to them what's going on, they will not understand. They need to come and live here for minimum three months before they really understand the magnitude of what's going on. But you can offer a smile, subhanallah. You can offer a good word. This is why I started off by saying my brothers, my sisters. When Allah says He created you to test you, He knows what He's talking about. He said it in more than one place in the Quran, that I created you to test you. Who from amongst you has the best deeds? So my job is to make sure that I try my best in the difficulties that I have to be the best possible person I can. And Allah says, He will dangle in front of you haram in order to see if you're going to swerve away from it, he will dangle it. So you will see something in front of you totally haram. It's so easy to do it. But Allah is watching. If you do it, the only thing that happens is you are now jeopardizing the chances of you entering paradise. That's all. Don't do it. And if you have done it in the past, like I said, seek the forgiveness of Allah. He tells you for as long as you're breathing, you know what? I will wipe out whatever you've done in the past. Whatever it is, I'll wipe it out. Seek the forgiveness. Turn to Allah. As we are growing, as we are aging, Wallahi, we are becoming closer to our graves. People our age and younger than us have gone in a healthier state. Suddenly, may Allah forgive us. May Allah make it easy for us the day He takes us away. My brothers, my sisters, really and truly speaking, I chose today to speak about what I've just said and you've heard it because we're all struggling. Everyone in a different way and to different levels. Don't become despondent. Allah loves you. Allah knows. Allah is watching. Trust me, things will become easy. You have to have the hope. You have to have the belief. You have to know deep down things are going to become easy. But those things will only become easy when you become closer to Allah. So learn to get closer to Allah. The first thing that will happen, Allah will give you contentment. Allah will give you happiness. Allah will give you such a beautiful feeling within that you will be going through a more difficult patch than a lot of other people, but you can still smile. When they see you, they won't believe the type of difficulty you are going through. May Allah bless you all and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us goodness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad. Iqra kitab Allahi tarqa jinanahu wa tanal azim al-ajr wal-ghufrani Rattilhu rawil qalb minna 
نفحاته كالماء يروي لهفة العطشان